guys, I want to welcome you to the weekly Wednesday for the Financial Freedom Newsletter, where every week, every Wednesday, we delve into something inspirational, motivational, something excerpt taken from the Financial Freedom Weekly Newsletter. Wherever you are, if you're listening on Spotify, on iTunes, Google, be sure to click the like, subscribe, share, comment. Without ado, let's get into the show. Welcome to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast, and I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, I'm always in the field for entrepreneurs, people doing things on the cutting edge, and people making a difference. So today, I'm actually excited to talk to our guest, Aysen Lee, and um, he's actually an entrepreneur in the relationship realm. And so, you know, you know, whether it's financial, spiritual relationship, marketing, sales, I'm always looking for key insights. So I'm happy to welcome Aysen to the show. Welcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Lu. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Yeah. Yeah. You're based out of Austin and kind of tell people um, your backstory, you know, your company, your business, and uh, we'll get right into it. Yeah, for sure. So what I do is I help guys with mindset, confidence, and dating. So, And uh, my background is um, I actually went to school for engineering, but being an engineer, I noticed a lot of guys in my class, in my major that were struggling with relationships. So I got into that because I was a little bit better than them at the time. So, <laughs> And I eventually um, started in 2016 and got better and uh, became a better coach. And then what differentiates me from other dating coaches is that I focus heavily on the mindset. So it's all about your inner self, right? Understanding and being your true self and having that self-worth first in order to have and attract someone else, you have to first love yourself, right? So that's the biggest difference. You know, other people might tell you, hey, just learn some pickup lines, you know, <laughs> here's some strategies you can implement. But then that could work short term. But then if you can't be that person yourself, then you can't continue the relationship. My backstory is that when I was a kid, you know, I was always shy. My Myers-Briggs were INTJ. So I had to really overcome that. And growing up in different parts of the world, you know, I was born in China and I moved to the Czech Republic and then eventually back to China and then America. So I was always like a different kid. You know, I always felt like I never belonged. And um, so it took me a while to have my own confidence. I had to develop my own identity as well. So, you know, I just wanted to jump on this podcast and share some things with you guys. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite interesting, the uh, the plight of the Asian man, especially in um, you know, Western society. Uh, you know, I have the same feelings, never fitting in and being the oddball out. One thing talking about is, so we talk about confidence. Talk, tell people about, you know, confidence and where it comes from, self-esteem. And, uh, you know, we'll get into whatever comes through it. Right, right. So confidence, in my definition, is competence, right? It comes from competence. So if you're skilled in something and you know you can do a good job at it, then you should be confident in that area. But also, it has to be from a place of a growth mindset. So for example, if you have a fixed mindset and you might be confident in the very beginning, but then if you fail at something, you make a mistake, that confidence just drops real fast. But with a growth mindset, you might make a mistake and then, but your mind is going to tell you that, hey, I can do a lot better. So let me try this again and then improve. And then that actually builds onto the confidence you had before. Yeah. And where does, where does self-esteem uh, play into this? Like, I'm curious, especially for, you know, uh, Asian, you know, where there's these little, I've talked to a lot of people, these micro traumas, you know, could, could be like discrimination, could be affirmative action, all of these things. Where does that play? Yeah, just understanding that you're not going to be liked by everyone. You know, I'm not liked by everyone. <laughs> Same thing with dating, right? <laughs> you know, let's say I like this type of woman and then she, her type is something, someone that has darker skin or someone that's white, right? And that's not me, right? But I'm not going <laughs> to say, oh, no, I'm not good enough because this person rejected me, right? Everyone has different preferences. Same thing with cars. You know, certain people like white cars, certain people like black cars, you know, certain people <laughs> go with silver. I like red cars, right? <laughs> so just because if someone has a different preference doesn't make you less than other people. And a lot of people think, especially Asian men, you know, we think that we're second class citizens. Whereas like <laughs> I try to 
see things as, hey, I'm unique, right? I'm different, especially in Texas. There's not a whole lot of us. And if I go into a place dressed up in a cowboy hat and boots, I'm going to stand <laughs> out. And that someone's interested, you know, in someone like me, they're going to jump on me, right? Because I'm different. I'm able to express myself without any hesitation. Yeah. It's all about it's all about self-expression and um the other question i have is because you have it you know your formal model and um so you know how where does uh where does looks play into it you know <laughs> is it is it kind of like a trump card ace card um, right it's funny that you mentioned that uh looks actually could be good or bad right so a lot of times if someone's born attractive they might not put into a lot of effort put a lot of effort into their looks and grooming so I would rather have someone that's average and you know works on their grooming hygiene right cut their nails right because that person is going to be more successful with women than someone that's sloppy and it's interesting uh because as a model back then i had the least confidence most of the best looks you know i've ever had in the in my life but least confidence because i was always comparing myself to someone else i say i go to a casting full of 30 40 guys same kind of look right and I don't get the job. And then I'm like, okay, that guy got the job. So why did I not get the job? Are my abs not good enough? Am I, am I too skinny? Am I too fat? You know, is my nose too, too narrow? Is my nose too big? You know, am I losing my hair? <laughs> so that's what I was thinking. And that's why at that time, my confidence was at the lowest because I couldn't validate myself. I was think, seeking validation outwards. In order to be a happy person with good self-esteem, you have to validate yourself. It's not about what other people think. It's about how you feel and how you think about you. Mm, yeah, I love that. So where do people get started? You know, everybody's looking for, um, you know, love and everybody's looking for, you know, when it comes to business and finances, um, how do people start? You know, you start, um, you know, you start working out to, you know, kind of describe your process mm -hmm. for helping people kind of pull themselves out. Yeah, that's great. Uh, the first step always is to uh, work with the end in mind, right? So if you have a goal, first find, I guess, figure out what your goal is, right? Some people want to have a relationship. Some people just want to gain confidence and date more people to find out what exactly they want. So I figured that out with my clients and then we can formulate a game plan. So that's always the beginning. But the first things that we always do is mindset, understanding what are some limiting beliefs you have that's holding you back? how what where did it come from right maybe a lot of it came from childhood upbringings your parents might might have you know been very strict and discouraged dating or never really you know gave you that validation or forms of affirmations so you know that person might have everything on paper but they feel like they're less than everyone else so understanding those things and deconstructing those things first before we talk about dating and um understanding how to communicate as well when then uh yeah, that's quite interesting. You know, a lot of people, they start, you know, becoming more social, just, you know, talking to people, you know, relationships is a social game. When you help clients, is it just in person? Is it remote? You know, do you bring them to venues? Kind of describe that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So before C-19 happened, I, uh, <laughs> I was doing more in person because, you know, that we would like to go out, talk to people, understand their struggles. But then... Ever since that's happened, you know, I was able to actually work with people that are outside of my vicinity. So like a lot of people are from L.A., California, Bay Area, um, New York, especially. So that's always been good because you know, I have a I have like supplemental videos, but then I also have like the one on one sessions we do. This is like kind of like therapy where we dive in and really be transparent with each other and understand exactly what to work on. Yeah. And then uh, what role does. um because now a lot of uh, millennial gen gen alpha now that with cell phones there's um, mm -hmm. all different types of dating apps. Uh, what role does these type like Instagram and you know uh, Tinder and all all of these uh, apps? Mm -hmm. How did that play into um, your business and your coaching and your clients? Right, mm -hmm. right. It's it's interesting because I'm not a huge dating app person because I feel like you know that it's. It's skewed because it's always going to be better for the women on the apps because guys, you know, this is easy because guys would swipe, swipe, swipe big, like 0.2 seconds. They know exactly if this person's attractive or not, right? 
So women get abundance of swipes and matches, whereas like guys, you know, we get like maybe one or two max <laughs> from time to time. <laughs> so that could discourage someone's um, mental health, right? And the majority of the guys aren't getting matches. That's why there's a study being done saying that more and more men are not having sex anymore mm. because they they can't find a mate or they just feel discouraged and, or they have higher standards. But then, you know, they see all the Instagram models are like, I want a girl with curvy butts, you know, I want this, I want that. But then they don't meet these women in real life. So they're like, you know what, I'm not going to settle until I get that. But so that's why. But I do like Instagram because Instagram is a great way to connect with people and also like showcase your lifestyle. So whenever I meet someone new, I don't get my number out anymore. I just get their Instagram or get my Instagram out because, you know, I post stories. I post like my posts of my lifestyle and then they resonate with that. You know, they might like my story and then I can reach out and be like, hey, you know, how's your day going? Let's grab coffee. Let's grab a bike. Right. So that's a great way. Even like someone that's having talked for like three years, you know, they might see my story. Like, hey, you know, what's up? What's up, Ison? How you been? Right. Reconnect. So that's a great way to reconnect. But I always think that it's way faster and easier to talk to someone in person. Right? I can go downstairs and like meet 20 people an hour, literally. That's all. It's like a business. You want to go where all your clients are. And so, you know, you go, you go to the platform where everybody, where your clients, you know, uh, you go to venues, whatever business, it's kind of, um, it's really interesting how the areas of health, wealth, relationships uh, all have similar. The other question I had for you is um, this idea with, uh, so what are some of the common mindset struggles for uh, Asian, Asian men? Mm -hmm. Most of the time is I'm not good enough, right? This person is better than me. She's out of my league. How am I going to be able to compete with all these other guys that are better than me? Right? I'm not interesting. Other, those are the two biggest ones. You know? But then I have to say, hey, why do you feel like you're not good enough? And then it almost comes back to childhood saying, hey, yeah, my mom compared me to Kevin, who's a doctor now. <laughs> right? But then I'm just an engineer, right? Or like my, my brother's a lawyer. And, you know, I feel like I'm the black sheep to the family because I, I like music. Things like that. And also, yeah, confidence. So that's why a lot of times people lack the confidence because they feel like they're not good enough. And like, you know, as parents, as Asian parents, we get a lot of criticism for not being the best, right? Like not getting 100 on our tests. Whereas like if we get like 98, we don't get praised. <laughs> like, hey, there's two <laughs> points you didn't get. <laughs> that's, you know, plays into our insecurities sometimes. Yeah. 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 Um... The other um, question I've always had is this um, area for um, interracial uh, dating for Asian men, because, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of like these stereotypes. It's like um, you always see Caucasian male with the Asian female. Right? That's but it's very it's very rare to see uh, Asian male with a Caucasian female. It's more like you kind of see like and you think is that cultural? Is it just kind of societal? Um, is it mental? I'm, I'm just... Mm -hmm. Yeah, part of yeah, part of it is it's a little bit of both. But a lot of times when Asian guys complain to me, they're like, "Hey, you know, all these tall white dudes are taking our women, and they're not even attractive, <laughs> right?" I'm like, "Okay, yeah. I see it from a perspective of saying, hey, you know, they're open to dating our race. Why can't we be open to dating their race, right?" And a lot of times, women, Asian women, like white guys is because they are more confident perhaps right they express more they showcase their um, vulnerability more so for example like we don't especially if you grew up in a korean family like your dad never talked to you about you know his struggles or his emotional being etc so he's always like hey i'm the best i'm the king of the house you know you do what i say you know no don't cry why are you crying <laughs> <laughs> like we're with the iron fist kind of mentality so a lot of korean guys that i talk to they always always have that mentality to say, hey, I can't show weakness around my woman or else she's going to ditch me and feel like I'm inferior. So that's like a toxic trait that some of the guys have. Whereas mm -hmm. like white people are like, hey, you know, I want to talk about this. You know, you said this yesterday about me. Why don't you sit down with you and talk about why you said this, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, sometimes they like that. Other than that, you know, it's definitely mainstream media has, has a big effect on dating as well. Whereas like growing up, I saw us Asian men as, you know, the funny characters of the movies or even like the nerdy characters whereas like now um and then back then all the white guys were the heroes and all the black guys were the villains so that plays a part into it because if you ask any five and you ask if you ask anyone like right now 
like in our age group, if, if they want to date an Asian person, that, you know, when they're younger, no, no one says, hey, I want to date this guy that's like nerdy to 16 candles, right? No, no one does that. So that's <laughs> part of it as well. But I, I encourage interracial dating. Um, if you, because I, I usually date white women because I'm just more familiar with them. And I think their mindsets are different, more similar to mine. Whereas like Asian women, you know, they feel like, I feel a little bit confined when I'm dating them because they're like, hey, you can't be doing this. You can't book a trip to Mexico tomorrow. It's too spontaneous. Yeah, this is yeah. my take. Yeah, interesting. And, uh, you know, as kind of as we, uh, it's really interesting. Um, like I said, uh, the mindset of entrepreneur in the realm of relationships. Um, and there's a lot of um, new uh, material out about, you know, healthy relationships and healthy dating and, you know, kind of this toxic masculine. And what, what's what been, uh, so as a engineer and now you've transitioned into a different form of business, what's kind of been your uh, key takeaways um, for anybody interested in pivoting, getting into something new? Yeah, that's a great, great question. Yeah, I would say I was stubborn as a as growing up, right? As a young <laughs> man. And uh, I thought that I could figure everything out myself. And later on in life, I figured that, you know, I had a lot of struggles, frustrations trying to do it myself, but then I, you know, got a coach. So finding a mentor is so important because it's going to make your journey that much easier since you already have a blueprint to follow. And it could save you a lot of time and money as well, because by doing it yourself, you might fail and discourage and try something else. And three years later, you still left with nothing and you go back to the things you did before unhappily. Right. Um, but then if you have a mentor that's going to you're going to invest in. So first of all, with a little bit of investment, you're going to feel like, wow, I put some skin in the game. Let's get through this. And then they're going to show you the way. And that's the best way to go about it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. It's always find somebody that's doing something that you want to be doing and emulate them, you know, take them out to lunch, coffee, mm -hmm. you know, invest in their programs. And how can people contact you, reach out to you, you know, check out your work and, uh, you know, s see what you're all about. Yeah, for sure. Um, they can go on to my website, the Asian, as well as my Instagram is just my first and last name, no space. And uh, yeah, if you send me a message, I'll message back, or you can just book a call on the website. You know, I love talking with people. It's a free call. You know, we can just talk, shoot the breeze, whatever you want. <laughs> so for all the audience out there listening, I send for coming on, being real, talking about struggles, you know, talking about entrepreneurship, relationship, coaching, and uh, all these resources, you know, links and show notes. And thanks so much for coming on to the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. I uh, had a lot of fun here. <laughs>